With the French Open starting in a couple of days' time, we are going to go through the players that have the most to gain and the most to lose. When it comes to ranking points at this event, of course, a Grand Slam's worth 2,000 points for the men and the women, so it's a lot to gain if you didn't play well last year, and there's a lot to lose if you did play well last year. Let's go have a look at who has the most to gain and most to lose. So starting on the WTA with the players with the most to gain, Madison Keys has been really good on the clay the last couple of weeks. She only made the second round at the French Open last year, so 70 points to lose, which means if she does go into the second week, she will add a lot of points to her total. Maria Zachary has been terrible at slams over the last year. She only has 10 points to defend, so we know she can play on clay. Let's see if she can do it at slams, though. Zhang, of course, this year's finals at the Australian Open, she only has 70 points from a second round last year. And Rabakina, she has no points really to lose, making the third round last year 130 points there. So, some great opportunities there for players that are in the top 10 or just outside of your Madison Keys to really gain some points at this slam. Players with the most to lose at this one, of course, Sabalenka made the semifinals last year, has 780 points from that semifinal to lose, which will put her in a bit of a fight for that second spot with Goff not too far behind in the rankings. Adaj Maya also has a lot of points to lose. 780 points from the semifinal from last year. Of course, Mukova, she is going to lose all these points. 1,300 points from her total, which will drop her down the rankings dramatically. She's already been outside the top 10, and she's going to fall probably outside the top 50 by the time she comes back. Of course, Igish Fiontech, the world number one. Even if she does lose badly, Sabalenka has to do a lot to sort of take her number one spot. So, Fiontech, even though she has the most to lose, her number one ranking should be okay if she has a decent run at the French Open. Going over to the men's side with the players with the most to gain, Yannick Sinner. If he does play, only met the second round last year, 45 points on the line. And if he does make it to the second week or to the semis, as what most of us think he will, if he's healthy, that's a lot of points to gain. And of course, he's in a fight with Novak Djokovic for that number one ranking as well. So if he does play, the more points he can gain, the better chance he has of being number one after the French. Taylor Fritz, only made the third round last year, has been really good on the clay the last couple of events. So a lot to gain for him. Of course, Daniel Medvedev, massive upset at the start of last year's French Open. Lost in the first round, only has 10 points. Hasn't been great on the clay this year, but maybe that's what will help him gain a lot of points and try and get his number four spot back from Zverev that he lost last week. And Rublev, he just won Madrid. He only made the third round last year and then lost, so he's got a lot of points that he can also gain in this event. Players with the most to lose, Carlos Elkraz made the semifinals last year. Hasn't played that much clay court season either, so lost a lot of points from not playing a lot of the events this year. So kind of needs to play the French to keep himself in that top three. Of course, lost his ranking to Sinner recently as that number two spot. Alexander Zverev just won Rome, but he has a semi-final to defend as well. 720 points there from last year's event. Kasper Ruud. If he doesn't defend those 1,200 points and loses early in this tournament, he could lose his top 10 spots. So he really, really needs to have a good run again. Has made the last two finals, but a quarterfinal or a semi-final just to cover those points to keep him in that top 10. Of course, Novak Djokovic last year's champion with 2,000 points on the line. And unlike Sviantec, he has to do well because Yannick Sinner is breathing down his neck in the rankings. Sinner might not even play. And if Djokovic doesn't perform well, it could affect him and push him down to number two and make Yannick Sinner number one. So a lot on the line for the rankings of the men in this one. So there you have it. They are the rankings points, the most to gain, the most to lose. Of course, there's a lot of other players that have a lot more to gain. Players that made the quarterfinals that have a little bit more to lose as well from last year. But those are the major ones. Man, that Yannick Sinner and, and Novak Djokovic, like that, that's the one. Because of course, the world number one ranking is on the line. If Sinner doesn't play and Djokovic doesn't make the final, then Sinner will be number one as we head to the grass court season. So a lot of pressure on Novak Djokovic to at least make the final of this event, and that's if Sinner doesn't play. If Sinner plays, it might be out of his hands. You might have to just accept that Sinner's going to take that number one spot off him, but let me know down in the comments below. Who are you looking forward to seeing the most at the French Open, and who has the most pressure on them at the French? Because I don't think Fiontech does. I mean, she's won the last couple. Yeah, winning three in a row is good, but her ranking isn't at stake. That's one less thing to worry about, but uh, on the other hand, Novak Djokovic has so much at stake. Not just another Grand Slam, but the fact that number one ranking is on the line. But there it is. They are the most to gain and most to lose when it comes to ranking points at the French.